Taya by them, Vila Sitesu, although in the function, Esu, these, Gunesu, the modes of material nature, Gunavan, affected by the modes. Eva, as if, Antaha, within, Pravistaha, entered into, Abhati, appears to be, Vijnana, by transcendental consciousness, Vijimbitaha, fully enlightened. Translation. After, the crea after creating the material substance, the Lord, Vasudev, expands himself and enters into it. Although he is within the material modes of nature and appears to be one of the created beings, he is always fully enlightened in his transcendental position. Purport. The living entities are separate parts and parcels of the Lord, and the conditioned living entities who are unfit for the spiritual kingdom are strewn within the material world to enjoy matter to the fullest extent. As Paramatma, an eternal friend of the living entities, the Lord, by one of his plenary portions, accompanies the living entities to guide them in their material enjoyment and to become witness to all activities. While the living entities enjoy the material conditions, the Lord maintains his transcendental position without being affected by the material atmosphere. In the Vedic literature, Shruti, it is said that there are two birds in one tree. One of them is eating the fruit of the tree, while the other uh, is witnessing the actions. The witness is the Lord, and the fruit eater is the living entity. Um, the fruit eater, living entity, has forgotten his real identity and is overwhelmed in the fruit of activities of the material conditions. But the Lord, Paramatma, is always full in transcendental knowledge. That is the difference between the Supersoul and the Conditioned Soul. The Conditioned Soul, the living entity, is controlled by the laws of nature, while the Paramatma, or the Supersoul, is the controller of the material energy. Om Jnati Marandasya Gyanandana Salakya Shakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurve Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rakadamayam Radhati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yutapada Kamalam Sri Gurun Vaisnamamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Rahunutam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadhvitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Visakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gupesa Gupika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kansana Gaurangi Radhe Vindavane Swari Visabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Aripe Vancha Kalpa Turubhya Kripa Sindhubhya Vacha Paditanam Pavanhebhyo Vaisnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare
how much is Krishna absorbed in transcendental love? How much is Krishna um, always thinking of his devotees? Sadhanam ridhyamayam Sadhavori ridhyamayam Sadhanam ridhyatvaham Mad anyate na janati Naham te vyapana Managapi It is said that somehow or other the devotee is always thinking of Krishna and Krishna is always thinking of his devotee. Um, it is said Krishna is a chuta. He never fails to notice the smallest service rendered. Um, in the Rig Veda it is said let the world look upon me with loving eyes and let me look upon the world with loving eyes. So in this way we can appreciate how um, how Krishna is looking upon the world with loving eyes and how Krishna is somehow or other uh, deeply, deeply involved with every living being, brimming, over brimming with loving feelings. Um, that is Krishna. Krishna is not the one who administers karma. He's not seated on a cloud looking down the punishing God. Uh, we went on Harinam in Amsterdam, which is sort of a good city for Amsterdam, for Harinam. And we started at a particular place, there's an old little tower, and we always start there, and then go around the city. And then in the end we stop at the tower again, we do a circle. So there, was some, there were some street artists, they were drawing something on the street as we left. And uh, it wasn't quite finished. Uh, we're just making the first sketches and we just went. We were, everything was nice. We, we were going along the street doing our Hari Nam and there's people, you know, moving with us and everything uh, looked really, really like this is going to be great. Next moment, some guy comes and he just like, in a very envious way, like <laughs> spits on the ground in front of us. Ooh, this, you know, this one has got a problem. And we go a little further and suddenly a toilet seat flies out of the window in our direction. We duck. It flies over our head. I mean, we moved on quick, wondering what was going to come next, you know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> After the toilet seat, what else <laughs> can come? <laughs> so anyway, we moved on, and it is going. And it was so extreme. Like later, we came back to the place where we started, and what we saw, we saw the picture that the artist had been making was now finished, and what it was, it was a god seated on a cloud, angry, old, looking down. No wonder people throw things at us. No wonder they spit because that punishing God, who wants him? Who, who wants to? Who wants a God who is the punisher? And if you don't walk in line, <laughs> see what's going to happen to you. Who wants that God? No wonder people rebel. Uh, how different is the Sankirtan <coughs> movement, which is a movement of love, a movement of great compassion, a move, uh, a movement of great pint, of great kindness, a movement of patience. Uh, Krishna is patient. Krishna understands. Uh, when he comes, when he expands himself, and as the super soul, why would you have to do so? Uh, I have to deal with my own thoughts. That's already a handful. 
Mm. What if I would have to deal with the thoughts of all of you as well? If I would just have to know everything you think, I would think that would be quite a burden on my mind. What if I would have to know every thought and every desire of every living entity? I mean, that's pretty intense, but that's the super soul. Huh? The super soul is aware of every single thought of every living entity. And somehow or other, why would Krishna burden himself with all that? Why would he, why would he not just think of the eternal pastimes in Vrindavan and how amazing, how even the Dham itself uh, Jiva Goswami describes how, how the entire Dham is just overwhelmed with ecstatic symptoms of pure love of God. Uh, the whole Dham, when we say there is the transcendental potency of the Dham, and when you're in Vrindavan, you feel this transcendental potency, Jiva Goswami describes this as this is the, the love and the ecstasy of the, of the Dham. The Dham itself is filled with love. What to speak of all its devotees? What to speak of every tree, all the, all the animals? What to speak about all living beings? How can one conceive? So here the Lord resides in His, in his loving exchanges and, and the love is just increasing. And in every direction you look, love is increasing because when you see, when you see how another devotee, how nice that other devotee is serving Krishna, your love for that devotee is also naturally increasing. And, and there's an exchange when that devotee sees how, how our love is increasing for them, naturally their love is also increasing. It's, it's the premam ritambo. Uh, it is that ocean of transcendental love. And Krishna, voluntarily, he cannot, when someone is somehow or other turned away from that, Krishna cannot just sit back. Krishna cannot just say, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait till you come back. Oh no, that Krishna cannot do. Uh, therefore, out of love, Krishna appears as the super soul. Out of love. He doesn't have to do that. He could have just arranged, okay, you guys want a place where you can just be Lord and, and you know, Aham, Ishvaro, Aham, Aham, Bogi and all that stuff. You can do that, you know. You can be the controller and the Lord. You can be the enjoyer of your senses and I'll give you that place. Go there and do, and do it as long as you like and when you're done, come back. He could have easily done that. But no, he could have not done that. How could he, could he have done that uh, if, he, if he was the all-loving Supreme Personality of Godhead? Not some sort of mushy love like a pink cloud uh, that is sort of in, an, an impersonal pink cloud that is sort of all over the universe. Love. Right? Not that love. But personal, personal care actually, for the welfare and the happiness of every living being, and personally getting involved with every living being. That is Krishna, as he is expanding himself, and somehow or other, against his own desire, against his own desire, facilitating the creation of the material universe, and against his own desire enters into it all and against his own desire is inspiring Lord Brahma who is doing creation. and Lord Brahma also against his own desire has to create all these things which he really doesn't like like the influence of nescience <coughs> how can there be, be sense enjoyment how can there be uh, the desire to be Lord and, and, and just exploit the material world, yayedam daryate jagat, if there is uh, no nescience. And Lord Brahma had to create it. And Lord Brahma didn't like it. 
he felt really bad after creating that because he knew now I'm creating a powerful influence which is so powerful that it can sweep up living beings as a powerful river can sleep uh, can sweep us along uh, like a boat uh, being swept away by a powerful wind in the same way how can a man against his will engage in sinful activity so in this way Lord Brahma in all his wisdom and all his intelligence and in his pure devotion to the Supreme Lord in his pure love being a representative a pure representative of the Lord a Shakti Avesh avatar of the Lord he saw it all he saw it all therefore okay he created the four Kumaras who he placed in charge of the four knowledge gaining processes so that somehow or other uh, the living beings would not be ignored and thus when the Lord himself was not taking action then his devotee did it when the Lord himself was apparently neutral right then the devotee was not neutral of course apparently uh, uh, the Lord is never neutral the Lord is always it's always absorbed in thoughts of deep compassion but apparently neutral and then oh yes and then so many demigods appeared and yes Yamaraj another Shakti Avesh avatar and we hear how Yamaraj was be in the Chaitanya Bhagavat how Yamaraj was informed about the amazing thing happened and that it is said that Yamaraj has a whole department and there are messengers messengers who are reporting all the sinful activities and there are scribes who keep the records said so they had no place to keep the records it was just too much too much where to keep keep records of all these sinful activities of Jaga and Madha it is just too much and then and then by the amazing mercy of the Lord uh, now all that all that was written off and when Yamaraj Yamaraj who is the punisher in the universe when he saw this Yamaraj fell unconscious in his chariot in great ecstasy Yamaraj was just overwhelmed because Yamaraj is also full of love he's also filled with love although he has to do this unsympathetic job of the punisher but it's not the punisher of the conqueror I put my boot in your face and then put it on your neck and push you down you worm uh, now you squirm oh not this spirit uh, but the spirit of of a father you've taken it too far you have gone over the edge you have become cruel you've lost your love you have become selfish you have become exploiting you don't care about living entities you kill you use you exploit living beings like utensils you spray them you gas them you squash them you eat them you you use them to color your claws you use them for so many things you brush your teeth with them whatever you can do you boil them down to pulp in big kettles and you mix it <coughs> in in everything because when you milk the cows with machines and you don't care about them whatsoever but steal their milk and then you take out the fat of that milk because you can sell it separate and and you can make an extra dollar and then you put the remnants of the bones and the heads and the hoofs and all the things which you can't sell and can't use you boil it down to a pulp and you put that back in the yogurt and you call it thickener and that stuff right is really useful because in this way you make more money right? and, and so on and how deeply are we affected um, by all of this 
How cold have we become? Uh, Kirtanananda told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, why, or Swamiji more, why are you always emphasizing impersonalism? So in India, in India, of course, there are many impersonalists. But in the West, in the West, shouldn't we preach against atheism rather than impersonalism? Is he, here, it seems that the problem is not impersonalism on such a large scale. Here, it seems that the problem is atheism. Prabhupada said, you're saying that because you are an impersonalist. Hmm. And he was our, he was ahead of us. And to what degree are we impersonalists? To what degree do we have any emotions left? Have we become dull? Have we just simply become shallow? Whatever we feel, shallow feelings. Huh? What do we have left? Compassion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have a little compassion. I'll help you. You know, I'll give you a dollar. Yeah, no problem. I'll give you some prasad, you know, I've done a good deed today, yes, I mean, I get a star for all, all I have done. Uh, the depth of my compassion, how deep is it? Oh, not that deep, I mean, not as deep as the depth of hell, not as deep as the darkness in, uh, in the city, not that deep. Do I really want to go deep into the dungeons? Do I really want to go and reach out? To people who are really out there, do I? Not sure. Uh, from a distance, maybe? Do I mm. want to go into the zoo from, say, fans, but not like face to face? Because how deep is my love? Mm. Um, so, in this way, we have become dull, we have become shallow, we have, we're sort of here in a self contented little little tower of selfishness <coughs> looking down upon the world and and thinking yeah these conditioned souls you know they should get some of the mercy of Mahaprabhu um, but how different is the mood of Krishna um, Krishna was not thinking one day Krishna was thinking let me, let me give some mercy to these conditioned souls. Then he was thinking, why would I give them some mercy? You know what? I give them all the mercy. And he put the entire spiritual world in the material world. The tripad vibhuti in the ekapad vibhuti. How it's possible to put three quarters in one quarter. That the Supreme Lord can do. Well, he can do. He did. So, uh, what is the extent of Krishna's mercy? <coughs> what is the extent of Krishna's love? And when we meditate on that, more and more, uh, then one can only become amazed. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Daya Kara Vichar Vichara Karita Chitta Pabachamatka. When we are meditating, on the mercy of Lord Chaitanya in Chitta Pabachamatka, in the end, in the heart, there will only be amazement. What else? You can only look in awe and amazement from how is it possible that it's all, that it's all happening like this. Uh, we were in, uh, in the 80s, I was in Mayapur. Uh, involved in the construction of <coughs> Prabhupada's Samadhi. Um, at that time, at that time the devotees in Russia were suffering. Uh, they were suffering in labor camps, in psychiatric hospitals, and so on. And they were like uh, running an underground movement, I might say somehow or other, um, from one, one book and copying a book and somehow or other sewing books themselves right, at home in a flat they made, they made books and they would just put them out and 
in jail. They just made beads from bread somehow or other. And, and when they were locked in solitary confinement, Sanyas does in solitary confinement, he would take a teaspoon and on the, on the heating tubes, he would with Morse code, you know, tick, 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 Hare, tick, 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 Krishna, and do the whole Maha Mantra. It takes a long time in Morse code, but he did. And then after a while, some response, tick, tick, tick. What is this? Tick, tick, tick. You know, explain the whole Maha Mantra on the, on the heating tubes. It what took time. Code, huh? What is Morse code? What is Morse code? Not yeah. Mars code. He's like family member of uh, Okay. Morse code, <laughs> Morse code is, a, is, is something used in the military where you have a long signal and a short signal. And there are combinations of long signals and short, sig short signals, and that makes a letter. Yes. So he knew it, and other people knew it too, and they used it. Yeah, like you can do it with light, a long flash and a short flash, and make combinations like that. You can Google Morse code, download the Morse alphabet, and you can at night stand in front of the window and with a torch you can flash to the neighbors wow. and maybe somebody who's been in the navy will know what you're talking about anyway you did it that way you can also do it through sound yeah, so it's either sound or it's just long signal short signal combinations of long and short signals more good google google and so in this way, the, uh, the entire, they couldn't stop them. They were unstoppable, unstoppable. So they tried, tried. Psychiatric hospitals, they tried. They sent them off to Siberia. So then Kirti Raj, who... Um, is, a, is from Russian descent, but American, and is enormous. I mean, Kirti Raj is like extremely tall and extremely broad in all directions. So <laughs> he is a mountain of a man. And when Kirti Raj takes the lead, he takes the lead. You know, I, mean, I guess he's old now. So, but, so he took the lead and he uh, started these big press campaigns in India and, and around the world, but personally he was heading it up in big ways in India because India and Russia were close. And it put a lot of pressure on the Russian government. Uh, and eventually, uh, eventually, the campaign, a sort of an Amnesty International campaign was successful and they let the Russians out. And who let the Russians out? Gore Bachov. Gore Bachov. Hey, I mean, maybe they even used to call him, hey, Gore. Uh, I mean, so much Nama Bas. How else? It had to be him, Gore Bachov. It had to be him. And then these Russian devotees came, and I remember we went to Calcutta to receive them. And we, uh, there was a Kirtan party in, uh, in the Dumna March on the drum, uh, Bibi Govinda March leading, and uh, everybody dancing, and Bhakti Churu Maharaj and Case of Bharati Maharaj, they are good at hugging people. Wow. <laughs> so they were hugging them. And they had some ladies, of, uh, I, don't, I don't know for sure which ladies were hugging the ladies. But all these devotees were coming out and they couldn't believe it, you know, sort of like, whew. We did it again in Mayapur, a second reception. And then there was a Bhagavatam class. And that day Bhakti Chiru Maharaj gave the Bhagavatam class. And in the verse, they spoke about Keshava, Keshava. And Bhakti Chiru Maharaj is explaining 
how Keshava is referring to Krishna who has very beautiful long hair and then at the end of the lecture and he kept on repeating this throughout the class several times Krishna's beauty is beautiful long hair then at the end of the class there is this uh, this Russian devotee he asks a question and he explains he said they put him in a psychiatric hospital and they gave him some drugs and you f when you were sitting down you felt I gotta stand up and when you would stand up you felt I gotta sit down so for hours he would just stand up sit down stand up sit down stand up sit down stand up sit down so it was very uh, uh, and and he said at that time as this was going on at one point in his head one name appeared and it was Keshava he said Keshava he said that kept on playing in his head again and again and that Keshava he said that sort of pulled him through the whole thing Keshava Keshava so he said what does it you spoke about Kesava. What does it really mean, Kesava? And again, Bhakti Chumarche Krishna with the beautiful long hair. He couldn't get it. Krishna with the beautiful long hair. And then Maharaj said, but it also means Krishna, the killer of the Kesi demon. And then he explained how the Casey demon, the over, all overpowering Casey, his manes touching the clouds, his teeth not just being regular teeth, but his teeth being fangs, because Casey was not a vegetarian. <laughs> mm. Women would have miscarriages. The thundering sounds of his hooves. When Casey appeared, it appeared nothing could be done. Casey was just so unlimitedly overpowering, nothing could be done. Nothing. Nothing. You know? Don't even try, okay? Don't even try. Just give up now. You got it. You know, you're finished, you know? Don't even try. Uh, Casey. Like that? Uh -huh. But Krishna Keshava, the killer of the Kesi demon, oh yes, this whole Russian system, so overpowering, like Kesi, mm -hmm. destructive, you know, don't even try, there's no chance, you know. But somehow or other, mm -hmm. uh, Krishna, killer of the Kesi demon, yes, it can be done, yes, take shelter of Keshava, Keshava, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, Keshava, Keshava, stand up, sit down, Keshava, stand up, sit down, I'm finished, stand up, sit down, I'm exhausted, stand up, sit down, Keshava, Keshava, and somehow or other, it pulled him through, and in this way, um, and that was Krishna, Krishna was there. Krishna was there in his darkest moment. <clears throat> the other day, <clears throat> some time ago, I read somewhere how the Pope, this Pope, who I think is, is pretty good, the Pope met a, uh, a drug addict. So what are you going to say to him? What are we going to say to a drug addict? You know, I mean, as a Pope, pray, you know, as a, as a Hare Krishna, what are you going to say? Chant, you know, chant, it will save you. Chant, right? But that's not what the Pope said. The Pope said something else. The Pope said, he said, you'll find the Lord in your addiction. Now that's something. I'm sure that 
He remembered that. That's sort of a, a statement, right? And here this devotee, in his darkest hour, he found the Lord because the Lord is filled with love. The Lord is not going to neglect anyone. The Lord is not going to leave anyone. Just go to hell. You know, you're too sinful. Go to hell. Ha, 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 ha. No. Even there, even in hell, the Lord is still, still manifesting himself. Somehow or other. I know myself from being in the hell in Amsterdam hmm. uh, and being in, in nightlife in Amsterdam and all that. But somehow or other, I met a girl with a dog named Krishna. Oh. And that changed everything. <laughs> that changed everything. I would walk with that dog around the block after a while, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I walked with the dog around the block and the dog wouldn't come back. So I'd be calling that dog, Krishna! Krishna! I was doing Hari Nam every night. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what I was doing. Every night. I was doing Hari Nam. Yeah, in the whole neighborhood, everyone. I, I had a loud voice, you know, <coughs> and I was yelling really loud. I'm sure a lot of people. And it's all apartments, you know, high-rise apartment buildings. But I tell you, they heard it up there. They <laughs> sure did, you know. Because I don't know where Krishna was. I knew one thing. I can't come back without Krishna, oh, you know. Me. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I got to bring Krishna back home. <laughs> and, and see what happened. <laughs> see the result. Right there in hell. Right. Right there in hell. Somehow or other Krishna was there. Right. As my Farkma Padarsha Guru. Befittingly. <laughs> you know. According to my level. So, <coughs> folks. <coughs> I can testify to loving nature of the Lord. <laughs> who is just everywhere and it's just all present and all compassionate and even reaches out to hell and will not let anyone rot that I can testify to you today Amen. so in this way um, when, when we read this verse after creating the material <coughs> substance the Lord Vasudev expands himself and enters into it. And although he is within the, the material modes of nature and appears to be one of the created beings, he is always fully enlightened in this transcendental position. Then we understand that the essence uh, is, he is Akila Rasamrita Murti, the unlimited reservoir of love. And he enters into unlimited loving relationships with all living beings. That is what we understand. Any questions? Any comments? That's true. That's true. He is going to take care of you. You don't have to make any effort on your side. It's just going to take a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's just going to suffer a little, little longer. You know, just like just a number of years that we even can't express. <laughs> Mathematically, 
it's so long that mathematically we could only put the symbol unlimited. But, you know, yeah, it's up to you. You're totally free. Go for it. Go for it and suffer as long as you like. <laughs> you know, you don't have to do anything. But when you're tired of it, when you've been beaten on the rock and you get soft and you, and you just are really deep in your pain, then just know that Krishna is there and all you have to do is reach out to him and chant his holy name. That's all. You can reach out to him anytime in the midst of the worst suffering. You can. Right there and then. You can step out of it if you want to. Welcome. If you want to. And if you don't want to, go ahead. <coughs> go for it. Suffer. When Jai Dwejamach was here in New York and was stopped by a policeman as a brahmacharya, actually, they, uh, the cop asked him, he said, what is it that you guys have to give up? You know, you have to renounce so many things as a monk. What do you have to give up? <laughs> Maharaj said, suffering. <laughs> oh, my God, that's a great answer. Suffering. Suffering. <laughs> Finish? No. Uh, you were speaking about how you know you were in uh, you were preaching in Russia. Like, um, you know about the devotees in Russia. So like you were you're also in a time where Iskan had like a sort of a dark period with the you know in the dark uh, period. At, at that time, you know, I, I could you like sh share with us how you know your faith in the holy name and all that like increased by just like sticking it out. Okay, you know, the dark periods um, in the mid eighties um, you know, it's easier to be a leader than to be a follower. So when you, when, when you walk up front, you can just go a little longer into the austerity than the guys who are following. Because you get some energy from leading others. So you're leading a group into an impossible situation, and you're walking up front. And you tell everyone, come on, you know, go, we, we, we're going to do this, you know. And, and just that gives you some power and some energy. And with that, you can go a bit longer than everyone else. So behind you, everyone is like, oh, okay, we can't do this anymore. Come on, you guys, you know, what's, I mean, you're useless, you know, what kind of, guy, what kind of spirit you got, you know. Oh, go. So in this way, the leaders got strength from being leaders. But... That's not enough. You got to get a strength. You got to get a strength from from Krishna, and from appreciating, uh, from really meditating deeply on Krishna's love and, re and re reciprocating with that love. Hmm. Then it, then it become untouchable. Anyway, so that they had not realized. So the leaders began to run dry, and they got spiritual difficulty, and then one after the other. Krishna's arrangement. And then, of course, so in the mid-80s started what, what I would call the big breakdown of faith. Mm -hmm. right? so, see, before, everyone thought, I just surrender and I'll be totally sheltered. Mm -hmm. Iskan will take care of me all the way, spiritually, materially, everything. <coughs> you, know, you just surrender and you'll be fully sheltered. Every, every, all of your needs, you just surrender to Iskon and all your needs will be met. Well, you know, in the mid-80s that balloon pooped, uh, popped and everyone was sort of thinking like, ooh, I don't know about that. I got to also make sure that I survive. Mm -hmm. And everyone started to hold back and everyone started to uh, keep their, their private territory. 
uh, which previously they didn't do. And then, now this whole period went on uh, over a period of time. It started in the mid-80s and then different personalities went down, 87, you know, some went down, 85, some went down. The last of the Mohicans <coughs> went down in 97. Mm. So, in 97, I had just taken some ups and I went to that area where, uh, where it all was going on. And it was the same thing again, all over big collapse of faith and everyone started to look after themselves and everyone was and the mood became very simple I mean there were jokes going around uh, you know like uh, there were jokes going like I don't know if you know the light bulb jokes yeah. you know how many people it takes to change a light bulb one, you know, I mean, it's usually like you choose some ethnic group that, you know, you consider not so exalted, right? Like the English might choose the Irish, the Dutch would choose the Belgians, and yeah. How many Hare Krishnas does it take to... I, I'm, I'm getting it. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to it. One minute. Give me, give me a chance to finish. I'm, no, we're going to get to this. Be quiet. Now, it says, how many does it take... How many does it take to change the light bulb? It says one to hold the light bulb and 40 to turn out the room. Okay? That's the joke. You know, from really bright people who are going to change a light bulb. So it's a goof on people who have not so much pain. All right? One holds the light bulb, 40 turn around the room. Uh -huh. how, many hard, how many gurus it takes to change a light bulb? It's hard to say. They keep on falling down. Oh my God! <laughs> that was that was the movie. Now you, how many Hari Krishnas does it take to go on Hari Nam? I don't know, Prabhu. It's not my service. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, anyway, so these kind of jokes. Uh, so the mood was very cynical, and. Uh, <coughs> No one had faith. That was the big issue of the dark days. So, you know, so what to do about it? Um, and I was thinking about it. People were saying, Iskon is dead. Iskon was gone. You know, Iskon has gone. So many varieties of like Iskon, uh, goofs on Iskon, you know, like, okay. Huh? <coughs> Iskan is a con. Yeah, he was there too. <laughs> but like this, all these kind of things. So the baked down of faith. Well, what I was thinking is this, is that um, you got to look at a spiritual movement in different layers. On the top, the surface, there is the organization, institution, the church, the temple, it has its successes, its failures, it has, you know, all these things. So, but on, on a deeper level, there's the chanting of Hare Krishna, there's Srimad Bhagavatam, and no matter what happens on the top, that still is the same, that's eternal, that still works. So the process is never touched, the chanting of the holy name is never touched. So the top layer, the external feature, the institution, and whatever happens there, successes and failures. In the chanting of the, the, chanting of the Holy Name, the full mercy is always accessible. Uh, even when the temple collapses and the mercy is not so accessible in the temple, still it's accessible in, in the process. Then on the deep level, the deepest level, this is Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. He is driving it himself. Right? So on the deepest level is the Supreme Lord. And so those who connect on the deepest level in this movement connect to the Supreme Lord. On the surface, there's the Kanista Adhikari. The, the <coughs> on the medium level of the perfect process, the Madhyam is penetrating. And on the deepest level, <coughs> the Uttam is reaching. <coughs> the Uttam is connecting with the Supreme Lord, connecting with that loving energy, and 
and brings it back up into the process. So suddenly chanting comes to life. Suddenly it's, it's all magic. Right? The Bhagavatam becomes like an event, you know. And, and then the whole organizational thing starts to flourish as well. Um, so this way is this tree layer model. That's what I developed for myself to survive. Mm. The dark days. Wow. The dark the dark ages. Is an online question, Marsh? Yeah. Give the no, like, give first the online and then we'll take uh, it. From uh, Divyangi Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, my humble obeisance is Maharaj, all glories to, to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for this transcendental class. My question is how to balance our service with self-care. How to know if you do enough with your service, even though there is never enough. All this balance is something that is coming up in so many fields. And we need to balance... Balancing is like three balls, juggling. We have a ball of our spiritual bhajan, our, our chanting, our reading, to be absorbed. We have a ball of doing some service, something for Prabhupada, to get the mercy. And we have a ball of our personal well-being. Three balls. Personal well-being, bhajan. I prefer bhajan to sadhana because bhajan is a word that sounds more loving. Like doing it with love, sadhana sounds more like you have to do it. <coughs> so, personal well-being, bhajan, and mission. <coughs> These balls you have to juggle. When you juggle balls, there's always one in the air, and there's always ones you are catching. Hmm. And so, sometimes you have to take care of your personal well-being, and other times. You've neglected really your bhajan. It's time to invest in your bhajan. And other times you invest in the mission. And all these three balls, you have to juggle somehow or other. So there's no fixed thing where you say there's a fixed, fixed situation. Here is the balance. And that settles it, right? No, it's balance in motion. And as it's balance in motion, you <coughs> have to give attention to different aspects at different times. Three balls, personal well-being, bhajan, and mission or service. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Wow. Just, <laughs> so, in the class we were discussing about how Krishna is all merciful, all compassionate, how God is like that. Now in your personal life, in, in Vrindavan, in the terms, management, in the manager, you face several <coughs> difficulties, in fact, um, difficulties that at least me as a person can never take. But uh, yet your, your faith in Krishna was undeterred. Now, from, a, from an external perspective, a person may argue, if Krishna is so merciful, you're serving him dedicatedly. How did you let that happen to you? So, what would be your answer because they would argue it's just blind faith but how, how do we explain? Uh, <coughs> for ourselves first of all in for ourselves I mean faith is not like conditional faith is like our, your eyes are opened and you understand it's the truth and now what else are you going to do you have no alternative mm -hmm. so whatever comes you got to deal with it mm -hmm. and make the best of it and carry on. That's for ourselves. Now, how to deal with others who are covered over, whose eyes are not opened or less opened? Yeah, you know, <coughs> that's, uh, that depends on, on the degree of, their, uh, of how, they're, how much they're covered. But I remember one devotee asked me that question, you know, and how do you feel now? Do you feel... Are you upset with Krishna? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and my answer was, no, actually, Krishna has, has been uh, 
kind to me because he's given me special attention. He could have just let me rot and sitting there nicely in my false ego and in the, in the comfort of my false ego and he just uh, just destroyed it. Mm-hmm. I shot a bullet, you know, someone shot a bullet, went from my back to the front and now be a mouse again. Puna music above. Now you be a mouse again. You, whatever you were, you're no longer that. Now you can be a mouse. And from the mouse position, you can just look at, at your life for a while and reflect. And that is what happens again and again. Be a mouse again. And, you know, and that's what Krishna does to us sometimes. He makes us a mouse again, right? The tiny little insignificant creature. Of course, we, for those who don't know the story, mouse was... Uh, having a problem <coughs> what went to a yogi yogi said what's your problem cat said oh what would you like want to become a cat one tatastu so be it be a cat one week later mouth is back yes mouth yes cat what's your problem oh dog what do you want want to be a dog okay dog back one week later dog what's your problem tiger want to be a tiger Tiger licking his lips, seeing the yogi. Yogi says, now what do you want? I want to eat you. Be a mouse again. So as we are growing bigger and bigger, then we become infatuated by our power. I'm American, you know. Whew. I am, or like, you know, I'm, I'm from a first world country, you know. I mean, you know, you realize what that means, right? We are the upper crust. We are the elite, you know what I mean? We are the guy. I mean, I am important. Oh, yes. You know, if, if a regular person cuts his finger, as a, as a cut in his finger, huh? you go, ah, oh, Prabhu, the, 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 band, the band-aids are in the kitchen, you know? Just put a band-aid, they're in the kitchen, on the shelf, right? Just go down and put a band-aid. But if the... If the king cuts his finger, then it's like, Ahoy, ahoy, all hands on back, all hands on back. The king, the royal finger, the royal finger has been cut. My God, the royal finger, the royal finger has been cut. And then, when everyone goes around you, for every little thing, every little cut, oh, the royal finger cut, cut, you know, then you are standing there as his majesty thinking, oh, yes, everything is so important oh god the, even you yourself start to think the royal finger was cut <laughs> right? it's dangerous to become a sannyasi because they do exactly that to you they put you on a throne they put you all the, every you you sneeze they bring a hundred tissues you know <laughs> I mean, what kind what kind of tissues would you want you know i mean we have three different brands here the scent, the scented ones the ultra soft ones or, or the extra strong ones, or a combination of the three, you know. Um, geez, well, I don't know, you know, but um, let me see. My nose is very sensitive, actually. Um, you know, no, no, it is, it is. It really is very sensitive. And well, I don't know if I can handle the scented ones, but um, <clears throat> I'll deal with the ultra soft if they're not going to rip, you know. Uh, oh. Thank you so much, yes. Um, <laughs> the royalty and then be a mouse again bang and, uh, and it's going to happen to everyone Krishna will pull the carpet from under us and we can be a mouse again for a while until he lets us again come up so that we can do some service hmm <coughs> Online questions. Ishwari Dasi. Thank you for the very useful and far out class. What helps us follow our spiritual dreams and goals? How to stay focused on following our spiritual dreams? Um, there's two things. When you say spiritual dream, you're looking at a long term objective. You're looking all the way to the end of the road where you want to go, back to Godhead. Um, back in that eternal relationship with Krishna. 
So that's the long-term vision. Together with the long-term vision, you should also have the short-term vision. It's the combination of the two, the long-term and the short-term. We should look very short-term. What's the next step? And surrender in the next step. And then what is the next step? And surrender in the next step. And in this way, surrendering from step and step, step by step by step, we're going forward. And each time in the situation now, now is the time to surrender and take the next step. And then step by step, we'll make it all the way to realize our spiritual dreams. And of course, where we fall short, mercy kicks in. Lots of, and that we need. Because we're going slow, at snail pace, and at this pace we may n never make it to the end, right? I mean, how much did we really advance? But we, we go along, and the mercy element comes in, and then will lift us across the gap. Finish. Thank you very, very much. Srila Papa Kija. Kantara Shima Bhagavatam Kija. By the way, get this thing on.